Home. For some, it may be as simple as a warm bed or wherever your family is, but perhaps we can all agree that home is where the heart is. But what if that was all stripped away from you? You're evacuated with no promise of when or if you'll return. This has been the reality for more than 400,000 people in Japan following the 2011 Fukushima disaster, where an earthquake and tsunami caused a major nuclear incident. Yet that didn't stop photographer Pierre Palomitika and filmmaker Alessandro Tizé to visit what's now referred to as the no-go zone later that year. I documented the exclusion zone, the empty towns and villages, the animal activists go inside the zone to rescue abandoned animals. The work of the contamination done by the government, the refugees in the shelters, the workers of the nuclear power plant in J Village, and many other stories. Now you're probably wondering, if this happened years ago, why are we still talking about it today? Well, because today, home is still not a safe place to be, as over 100,000 people still remain displaced. But Japan's government has been trying, trying real hard to decontaminate the area. According to experts at Japan's National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology, the cleanup will cost approximately $50 billion, which many consider to be a severe understatement. The people on the front lines are known by some as the nuclear gypsies, laborers exposing themselves to unhealthy amounts of radiation as they attempt to remove nuclear waste. But the steps to completely rid an area this exposed of radioactivity isn't one that's written in the books. And for Tizé, the current process has its flaws. The decontamination works was limited to scrape a surface layer of the soil only in some areas. The contaminated soil was then placed in large blue bags, which were then buried in huge areas that became places of temporary storage. Also, they proceeded to clean the houses with wet rugs and towels. Pretty ridiculous. The problem is that often those involved in the decontamination had no effective protection measures. Most of the time, they were just a simple mask. Protective gear is only one of the many problems nuclear gypsies face. These contract workers are often paid under minimum wage and receive little to no training. Some don't even realize they're stationed at Fukushima until it's too late, only being told of their destination after they've departed en route to the radioactive site. And many nuclear gypsies comment on how you cannot see, smell or taste the radiation, which may make it easier for returning citizens to forget it's even there to not even think of the consequences. And some have argued that the government is banking on that idea. The idea that ignorance is bliss. Today, after the ridiculous decontamination of the government, they are considered safe, and people are encouraged to come back to live there. In reality, the contamination is no longer in the air, but is deposited, and thanks to the precipitation, has impregnated the soil. Although only limited areas of Fukushima are allowing residents to come back, that doesn't mean these areas are safe. You can still find dangerous radioactive elements such as cesium, strontium and plutonium in abundant quantities here. Some citizens refuse to believe such and trust the government, while others simply don't care. Either way, as one local farmer puts it, all we want to do is look forward and get on with our lives again. We were always going to come back. This is our home. The people of Kazakhstan also struggle with dangerous levels of radiation. Watch this video to find out why the former Soviet Union conducted over 400 secret nuclear tests in the country. And then there's the fact that when the site closed, Russia essentially just walked away, leaving untold amounts of radioactive material behind. Thanks for watching and as always, don't forget to subscribe.